Hi everybody, so let's talk about gears a little bit. This is the drive gear because I'm going to drive it. This is the driven gear because that's going to turn it. And if I drive the drive gear intermeshed with the driven gear, you will notice that the drive gear turns clockwise, the driven gear turns anti-clockwise. They turn in opposite directions. And that's because one is pushing the other. And the same is true of these things. These things are bevel gears. There's nothing special about a bevel gear. It just takes a motion and turns it 90 degrees. Now, if I turn that one clockwise, what you'll see is that this one, there we go, this one is turning anti-clockwise. And this one looks like it's turning in the opposite direction. Now, you have to remember that these things are relative. If you're standing on a station, it's the train that zooms by. If you're standing on the train, it's the station that zooms by. Direction in a circle is one of those things that's hard to get your head around because it involves two things. One, it involves clockwise and anti-clockwise, which way around the circle is it going? And the other, surprisingly enough, it involves where you look at it from. So these things, bolts and nuts. Now, I'm sure you know that old adage, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Well, I can tell you. That's completely meaningless to me. I've never been able to cope with that. But if I look down the bolt, hold the nut, look at the bolt, turn the bolt in a clockwise direction, it will tighten it. So I always think clockwise, anti-clockwise, but you have to remember to look at the head of the bolt because if you look at the nut and turn that clockwise, it will also tighten anti-clockwise, it will loosen. So it's anti-clockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten, as long as you're looking in the right direction. And that's the thing that foxes people. There are two components to circular motion. One, the circle itself, and two, where you're viewing it from. If we look down there, we'll see that that is a clockwise rotation. And if we look down there, we'll see that that is a clockwise rotation. And if we look down there, we'll see that that's anti-clockwise. So it's all about where we look at it, but that's what happens. If I take that and I drive that clockwise, and it looks like it's going one way, we'll see that this is turning in the anti-clockwise direction. Now if I drive this clockwise, this is turning in the same direction, but this looks like it's turning in the opposite. So it looks like we're turning those in opposite directions and we get the same mechanical direction out. So that's the whole point of them. Now, in order to make that, what we need is some way of driving these two on the same axle so that we can turn both of these clockwise or, if you like, in apparently opposite directions. And, of course, there is something we can do. What we've got here is Archimedes' catapult. I love this, actually. And that is a ratchet. A ratchet allows directional movement in one direction. So if I lift that, you can see these are tightening up. But the ratchet is caught by this bit called the pole and it can't go in the other direction. So ratchets are tremendously useful. Now remember, motion is relative. It's the same thing for me to spin that ratchet as it would be for me to push that pole. It will go only in one direction. So we can make that go in one direction and then obviously remove the pole and the thing will fire. So in order to make a mechanical motion rectifier, we need some way of limiting that motion in one direction. And a ratchet is a really good way of doing that, as is a sprag clutch. Now, you have to think really, why would you have the two options? Well, one is really cheap and pretty universal because of course a freewheel in a bicycle is just a ratchet and pole and they're absolutely everywhere. So ratchets, which are also in your torque wrenches and just a whole host of places, are a really good mechanism because they're they're easy to construct relatively and they're cheap whereas sprag clutches can be a little bit more temperamental and a little bit more expensive. Now we made a ratchet and pole mechanism out of toothbrushes. We use toothbrushes because they're readily available. 
So somebody actually said, why did you use new toothbrushes? And I can tell you, it doesn't matter what you do. Somebody somewhere at some time is going to tell you you've done the wrong thing. If I'd used old toothbrushes, I could just imagine people going, oh, smelly toothbrushes. And then you use new toothbrushes, people go, oh, you're polluting the environment. There's a no-win situation here. But we also use toothbrushes. But the toothbrush itself doesn't really matter, okay? The toothbrush is really just an example of these bristles acting like a ratchet. Now these are nylon bristles and they're fairly stiff. They're actually mechanically quite strong and there's a lot of them. So the pressure that they can exert over the points of the bristles is well spread out. So we can get a lot of pressure per, for the whole unit because there's very little force per bristle. So a bristle-based uh, ratchet mechanism as opposed to a mechanical ratchet mechanism has a lot to actually um, well recommend it. One thing is the bristle itself acts as its own spring so as it goes there it's pushing but as it goes there it's springing back so the bristle ratchet which is what we developed in the previous video operates really quite well and we could use it as a freewheel but we can also use it as a mechanical movement rectifier so I've taken a couple of our bevel gears and I've stuck a toothbrush on them Again, okay, too tied up with the fact it's a toothbrush. It's actually a bundle of nylon bristles and there's just a whole host of places you could get a bundle of nylon bristles, including fitting them straight into the ratchet head themselves. So the cost of something like that, when you think a toothbrush like this is going to cost you about 12 pence, which is about 20 cents, is insignificant. It's tiny and yes they may wear out quickly but there's lots of applications where wearing out quickly isn't an issue and in fact I don't think they would because nylon is an incredibly tough material. Anyway we've glued a couple of those to our bevel gears to give it a go making a mechanical motion rectifier using a bristle clutch which is oh sorry a bristle ratchet which is what these toothbrushes represent. So let's slide that in a framework. There you go. Now it doesn't matter which way I turn that one, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise, that will always turn the same way. <laughs> and that is what a motion mechanical rectifier is. Obviously with our bristle ratchet, we've got a bit of an innovation there because that would be stunningly cheap to make. Now you might ask yourself, what's the use of such a thing? Well, they're used extensively in um, energy harvesting from the sea for wave power. They turn the wave into a rotation so you can generate with it. Now, when you think about something like nylon, of course, use in the sea, it's never going to rust. So it's going to last a very, very long time. You're not going to have the maintenance problems you have with steel. The other thing, of course, is it's incredibly cheap to make. So you're going to be able to make it at a very low cost indeed. So it has several things to recommend it. I'm sure there are issues, but those are issues that you need to work on because in itself, I think there's great value in something like that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Oh, the Tinkercad files are available. The link is at the bottom. I haven't showed them in the video. Just jump over and have a look if you want to see how these are made. But thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.